My first ever digital camera was a Sony Cybershot DSC P20. It has a whooping 1.3 megapixel resolution sensor, and I was just super happy with that camera. But we photographers just seem to always want more. We want more features, we want more resolutions. So even though these days, the lowest resolution camera that we can buy has at least around 15 times more resolution, we still want more resolution. One of the clever tricks that camera companies use to give us more resolution is the multi-shot high resolution mode. Different companies use different names to describe the same feature. You may have the term like pixel shift multi-shooting and other names, but fundamentally they are all doing pretty much the same thing. In this video, I'm just going to call this multi-shot high resolution mode or high resolution mode. By taking multiple photos, each with the position of the sensor shift slightly in pixel or sub-pixel distance, and then merge all the separate photos together, it increases the amount of details that can be captured and it also fixes one of the biggest limitations caused by our image sensor. Back in 2016, the Pentax K1 and the Olympus EM1 Mark II were some of the first cameras that has this feature. These days, more and more cameras have this feature as well. For example, my Fujifilm X-H2 has the multi-shot high resolution mode that can generate 160 megapixel high resolution mode photo from its APS-C sensor. Nikon just released ZF, which is the first Nikon camera that also has this feature. The Panasonic Numix S52 and the S52X that were released earlier this year also has the multi-shot high resolution mode, just like the other Lumix full-frame cameras. But Panasonic has just released a new firmware which adds the handheld high resolution mode, which means you can just handheld the camera and capture the multi-shot high resolution photo. And that makes the Lumix S52 and the S52X the first ever full-frame camera that can capture multi-shot high-resolution photo without using a tripod. Now, even though the multi-shot high-resolution mode has been around for a while, but quite often I heard many questions about this feature. Is this multi-shot high-resolution mode just a gimmick? Is the photo captured using the high resolution mode actually as good as photo captured using a high resolution sensor camera? And should we just use the new AI upscale software to upscale the photo instead? What are the pros and cons of shooting high resolution mode photos? I've done a lot of testings over the last few weeks and I'm going to share with you all my results in this video so we can know what the high resolution mode can and cannot do. The first thing we are going to look at is, does this multi-shot high resolution mode actually give us more resolution and details? So let's compare these two photos shot with the Lumix S52. The left is the normal 24 megapixel photo. The right is the 96 megapixel multi-shot high resolution mode photo. They are shot with the same camera settings and using the same lens. Actually, these two photos were captured at the same time because with the Lumix S52, when you capture the multi-shot high resolution mode photo, you have the option to keep one of the multiple exposure as a normal photo. So you have both the normal photo and the high resolution photo in RAW or JPEG format or both. Let's zoom in the photo. We can see the difference easily. The 96 megapixel high resolution mode photo has a lot more fine details than the normal 24 megapixel photo. The difference is really pretty noticeable. High resolution mode is definitely not a gimmick. I mentioned earlier the Numix S52 has just received a new firmware update which adds the handheld high resolution mode. Which means I can just handheld the camera to capture the multi-shot high resolution mode image without using a tripod. So does this handheld high resolution mode actually works? So here is a set of photos comparing the handheld high resolution mode photo with the normal photo and the standard tripod high resolution mode photo. The handheld high resolution mode photo does indeed capture more details than the normal 24 megapixel photo. It gives us noticeable improvements. 
but it is not as sharp and detailed as the standard tripod high resolution mode photo. The handheld high resolution mode photo is somewhere in between the normal photo and the standard high resolution mode photo. But anyway, the results shows us that both the 96 megapixel standard high resolution mode photo and the handheld high resolution mode photo can capture more details than the normal photo. But is it really as good as a camera that is actually 96 megapixel resolution? There isn't a Lumix camera that is 96 megapixel right now. I could maybe compare it with a 100 megapixel medium format digital camera. But then it would be a different size sensor, I have to use different lenses. So all these variables may also influence the result a bit. And also I don't have a 100 megapixel medium format camera that I can use. So what I did is I compared it with the 47 megapixel Lumix S1R. They are both full frame and I can use the same lens to shoot the comparison photos so I don't introduce too many variables to the comparison test. And here is the result. At first, I feel the photo from the S1R looks quite similar to the high resolution mode photo from the S5 II. But when I look at the photos a little bit closer, for example, if you look at the line of numbers, below the big storage box letters, the high resolution mode photo has more details and it also doesn't have the false color that the S1R photo has. So the 96 megapixel high resolution mode output from the S5 II delivers more details than the 47 megapixel S1R. Now I just mentioned false color. So let's talk about that a bit more as well as moray pattern as they are both image artifacts that are caused by or make worse by the Bayer sensor on most of our cameras. When we are shooting photos of things like fabrics or other human made object that has fine regular patterns, you may see some strange pattern and also color that we don't see in real life. That is caused by something called aliasing and it is a generic problem in the digital world, no matter it's for photos, videos, or audio. I remember I spent quite a bit of time learning about it when I was doing my engineering degrees, but without going into too much details, aliasing is when the sampling resolution not high enough to resolve the details and introduce those weird artifacts. The Bayer sensor we use in most of our cameras made it worse because it effectively lower the resolution of each color channel. Some cameras add a low pass filter in front of the sensor to make the aliasing issue less noticeable, but it does have the trade off of lower the sharpness of the photo a bit. The Lumix S5 II I'm using to capture most of these test photos in this video doesn't have the anti-aliasing filter in front of the sensor. So if we look at this photo that was shot with the S5 II and zooming the area around the black lens pouch, we see some funny color, false color and strange pattern which is the moray pattern. Even the black shelf under the lens pouch, you can also see a bit of false colors. Usually this kind of artifacts happens mostly with the lower resolution sensor that doesn't have the low pass filter. But even when I shoot the same photo with the 47 megapixel Lumix S1R that also doesn't have the low pass filter, the moray pattern and false colors are still there you can still see a bit of the moray pattern and false colors. Now, when I shoot the same photo with the S5 II using the high resolution mode, because the camera shifts the sensor in pixel and sub-pixel distance and capture multiple photos, it increases the effective resolution of the photo and also we don't need to completely rely on interpolation to generate the color information for each pixel which is one of the major weakness of Bayer sensor design. So the moray pattern and false color issues pretty much 
all disappear in the high resolution mode photo. And that's the same with the photo captured using the handheld high resolution mode. I also don't see any aliasing artifacts. I repeated this test using a Lumix G9 II, the latest 25 megapixel Micro Four Thirds camera from Panasonic. The results were very similar. The normal single exposure photo from the G9 II has a bit of aliasing artifacts, but the multi-shot high resolution mode photo doesn't have any of these issues. We'll have a look at the noise performance now. Here are two photos shot at ISO 3200 using the Lumix S5 II. One is the normal photo and one is the high resolution mode photo. If you zoom in and compare them, you can see the normal photo has more noise than the high resolution mode photo. The high resolution mode photo is just much cleaner. Sometimes cameras can give you cleaner image by applying stronger noise reduction, but that would remove the fine details. But if we look at the high resolution mode photo, this cleaner photo also delivers more fine details, so you get the best of both worlds. And if we compare the high resolution mode photo with a photo capture using a higher resolution sensor camera, in this example, high resolution mode S5 II versus single exposure Lumix S1 R. Even though both photos were shot at ISO 3200, which is not really that high for a modern camera, but the result from the S1R has more noise, even more noise than the S5 II because of its high resolution sensor. And let's look at another set of test photos, this time shot at ISO 800, so a little bit lower ISO. We have the normal photo, the standard high resolution mode photo, as well as the handheld high resolution mode photo. Once again, the 96 megapixel standard high resolution mode photo has least amount of noise and also retains the most amount of details. But if you look at the handheld high resolution photo, it is also very similar and noticeably cleaner than the normal single shot photo. Now, usually a limitation of a smaller sensor is that its files are not as clean and the image quality is not as good as the larger sensor, especially when you increase the ISO value. But if you shoot in the high resolution mode, the cleaner output means even if you are shooting in high ISO, the output image quality can actually be comparable to what you got from a larger sensor. So let's have a look at this set of comparison photos shot with the Lumix G9 II, which is the Micro Four Thirds camera, and the S5 II, S1R, which are the full frame cameras. All these photos were shot handheld and using the same camera settings at ISO 1600. I've resized the photos to the same resolution so that I can compare them. Now, if we zoom in, the photo from the S5 II has the least amount of details, which is not too surprising as the photo is 24 megapixel. But the photo from the S5 II is a little bit cleaner than the photo from the higher resolution S1 now. But the photo that has the best image quality is actually the high resolution mode photo from the Micro Four Thirds G9 II. Despite the G9 II has the smallest sensor, the photo actually is the cleanest but also captures the most amount of details, so that is pretty impressive. And remember, these are all photos captured without using a tripod, so the high resolution mode could be a great way to help you capture some nice clean photo under low light situation when you have to raise the ISO a bit. The next thing I look at is the dynamic range. So I shot some normal photo and multi-shot high resolution mode photo using the Lumix S5 II at the base ISO and I intentionally overexposed these photos by quite a few stops. Then I try to recover as much highlight as possible using Adobe Lightroom. Looking at the results I got, I say there is virtually no difference in terms of highlight details I could recover from the normal single shot photo compared with the high resolution mode photo. But then I did another test. This time the photos were underexposed quite a lot and I pushed the exposure by nine stops in Adobe Lightroom. 
Yes, nice stops, so it's pretty extreme. Even though both photos were shot at base ISO, ISO 100, the shadow area is much cleaner with the high resolution mode photo. So maybe because of that, there is more shadow details from the high resolution mode photo after this extreme adjustment. So even though the high resolution mode photos highlight details is pretty much the same as the normal photo, the extra shadow details that I can extract from the high resolution mode photo means the overall dynamic range we get from the high resolution mode photo is more than the normal single shot photo. Now, it seems the high resolution mode photo does indeed capture more details and it also offers quite a few advantage in terms of image quality. So does that mean we don't really need camera with high resolution sensor? Well, nothing is completely free. There are always pros and cons for almost everything. And there are also a few limitations and downside with the multi-shot high resolution mode. One of the biggest limitations shooting in multi-shot high resolution mode is motion blur. Because the camera need to take several photos and blend them together, everything has to stay at exactly the same place during the multiple exposures for it to work. It means you cannot move or pan the camera when shooting the multi-shot photos that may last a few seconds or even longer. You basically need a tripod. And this is the biggest limitation of high resolution mode. Some cameras like the Numix G92, S52 or the OM system OM1 has the handheld high resolution mode. So you don't have to use a tripod to take the multi-shot high resolution photo but you still need to keep the camera relatively steady and there really are not that many cameras that can do handheld high resolution photo right now. But it's not just the camera has to be static. The scene you are shooting also need to be static. Let's look at this example. This is the photo that I shot using a normal single shot mode. Shutter speed is 1 25th second. Not particularly fast shutter speed, but if we zoom in and look at the tree branches, there still isn't too much motion blur. But now, if we look at the photo that I've shot with the high resolution mode, the shutter speed was still the same at 1 25th second. If we zoom in and look at the building or the sign in front of the building, the high resolution photo resolves a lot more details and it is sharper as expected. However, if we look at some of the small tree branches in the background, there are quite a bit of motion blur there and the small tree branches are all blurry. It's because while the shutter speed is the same for both photos, the high resolution mode photo was created by merging 8 photos together so it's effectively a 8 times slower shutter speed so it's around 1 third second and that's why we can see quite a bit of motion blur in the high resolution photo. Fortunately, some of the camera has a special mode to deal with this. If you are shooting with any of the Lumix cameras like the Lumix S52 that has the high resolution mode, you can change the high resolution mode to mode 2 and the camera will try to detect where there are changes happened between photos and avoid merging these areas so these areas can remain sharp. Well, as sharp as a single exposure at least, because if your shutter speed is just too slow and even a single exposure has motion blur, then there's nothing the camera can do. With the Lumix cameras, if you are shooting in the handheld high resolution mode, it will also operate in mode 2 automatically and it would minimize motion blur caused by multiple exposures. But I want to emphasize most cameras in the market right now still do not have the ability to detect and minimize motion blur. If you are shooting with a Fujifilm camera or a OM system camera, for example, you will see the motion blur in the high resolution photo caused by multiple exposure. Another downside with the high resolution mode is that it takes 
a lot more time to capture and create the high resolution mode photo when you compare it with the normal single exposure photo. It takes longer time to shoot the photo because the camera needs to do multiple exposures to capture all the information needed for the high resolution mode photo. With the Lumix S5 II, for example, is either 8 exposures for the standard high resolution photo or 16 exposures for the handheld high resolution mode photo. For my Fujifilm XH2, it needs to do 20 exposures. The Nikon ZF is between 4 to 32 exposures. And with most of these cameras, you also have to set up the camera on a tripod as well. So no matter what camera you use, it takes longer time to capture the photo. But after the camera has captured the individual photos, it still need to process these photos, merge them together to create the high resolution photo. For most of the cameras in the market, like my Fujifilm X-H2 or all the Sony cameras, you need to copy the photos to a computer first, then download and run a special software to process the photos on your computer to generate the high resolution photo. So you can see this is quite a slow process. Now another downside of this workflow that require a computer to process the photo is that if there was something wrong with the photo that you captured, for example, the camera may have moved a little bit when it was doing the multiple exposure, then the result of the high resolution mode photo may not be as good as it should be, or the software may even fail to create the high resolution photo. But the problem is, you may not know that until you got home and processed the photos on your computer, and that would be just a bit too late if you need to reshoot the photo. If you are shooting with a camera from OM system or Lumix, then you are more lucky because these cameras can generate the high resolution photo in camera automatically straight after the photo is captured. It still take a bit of time for the camera to process and create this high resolution photo. But if we compare it to the camera that require a special desktop software, the in-camera high resolution photo generation is much faster and the workflow is much simpler. And the best thing is, if there was any issues with the high resolution photo, you just need to wait maybe 10 seconds or so and you can already see and notice the problem that is super important as that gives you the chance to notice immediately and we should if you have any issues but no matter what taking multi-shot high resolution photo is still much slower when compared to the normal single photo another downside with the high resolution mode photo is the output photo sometimes may have some image artifacts for example, if you look at this photo that I shot with the Fujifilm X-H2 in Hong Kong a few months ago, when I zoom in this high resolution mode photo, I see some weird artifacts in the photo. And this happens to every single high resolution mode photo that I shot on that day. And when I was testing the dynamic range using the Lumix S5 II, I noticed when I tried to push the exposure of the underexposed handheld high resolution mode photo by 9 stops in Lightroom, the shadow area which is supposed to be black becomes green and magenta. Yes, it is a pretty extreme and you can call it CD adjustment. But I don't see this artifact when I apply the same adjustments to the normal photo or the standard high resolution mode photo. So this is just another example of the image artifact that we may have with the high resolution mode. Over the last few years, there are a few software that uses AI or machine learning to help upscale the photo to give you more details and resolution and also cleaner output from your original photo. So I wonder, would I be able to just use this AI software to upscale and get results that is as good as the high resolution mode photo? 
We use the Gigapixel AI software to upscale the normal 24 megapixel output from the Lumix S5 II to 96 megapixel, so it's the same resolution as the multi shot high resolution mode photo. And let's compare the results. First of all, the AI upscale does give us cleaner image with more details than if I use Lightroom to upscale from the same resolution. Curves are smoother and the AI upscale also remove some of the false color, so that is pretty good. But the moray pattern is still quite noticeable. If we compare the AI upscale photo with the multi-shot high resolution photo, while the AI upscale photo looks really quite good, the result from the multi-shot high resolution mode is still better. There are more details, the moray pattern is pretty much all gone, the photo just look more natural compared to the AI upscale result. Now if we zoom in and look at the area with some smaller text, that's the area that the AI upscale to completely fall apart. All the small text in the AI upscale photo change from English into some alien language. And this is the same for pretty much all the smaller text in the AI upscale photo. Now, let's have a bit of fun. What if I try to upscale both the normal 24 megapixel photo and the 96 high resolution mode photo to 384 megapixel? What would the photo look like? The AI upscale software does a really good job upscaling both photos. Both photos look very clean and smooth, but the upscaled high resolution mode photo is noticeably better. There are still a lot more details, less artifacts like moray pattern, and if we look at the text in the photo, we do see the same alien language problem in both photos, but the multi-shot high resolution photo is a bit better. So anyway, from this test, I think we can see that while the AI upscale software is pretty good, but there are still some flaws that make them not really suitable for upscaling everything. And even if your photo is perfectly suitable to use the AI to upscale, the more details and less artifacts the original photo has, the better result you will get. So if you use the high resolution mode photo, you can still get better results. Okay, so we have looked at what the multi-shot high resolution mode can actually do. I think we can say for sure the high resolution mode photo offers a lot of benefits in terms of image quality. However, there are also some limitations compared to just taking a single photo with a higher resolution sensor camera. And even though a lot of cameras in the market has the high resolution mode, but there are some cameras that has better implementation. For example, the Lumix S5 II, it has the handheld high resolution mode and it can do the in-camera high resolution photo generation and it has the special mode to minimize motion blur. But no matter what camera you use, it's still not quite as easy and quick as compared to taking a single shot photo. So multi-shot high resolution mode, at least in the current state, cannot really completely replace a real high resolution camera yet. But if we understand the limitations, it is still a very useful feature when you want to capture photos with more details, cleaner output, and even a bit more dynamic range. And hopefully, as camera companies improve the multi-shot high resolution mode, it will give us better image quality with less and less limitations. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you do, I would really appreciate if you can click the like button, drop a comment, and share it around to support my channel.